Welcome to the moon tonight. Uh, this episode uh, is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I have just recently completed my first uh, three live videos of the moon. And doing those uh, videos, uh, I had uh, shot them with a uh, Logitech C525 camera. And during those presentations, I mentioned that I was going to upgrade my camera uh, to a C910, uh, which uh, should give much, much better results. Well, the camera's here. Uh, I've got it up and running, I'm actually testing the camera. That's uh, what's recording this video right now. Uh, so I figured as long as I'm going to do the test, I might as well also show you um, uh, kind of how I, I, I do my imaging and with what equipment uh, as far as uh, cameras and eyepieces go. Um, the telescope I use is a, uh, for most of my videos, is going to be a, a, a Skywatcher 127 millimeter or a 5 inch uh, F12 uh, Maxudoff Cassegrain telescope. Uh, it's uh, another way, it's a long focal length telescope of 60 inches and a short tube of only 14 inches long. Uh, it kind of helps out with the, the bad back situation I have. Um, but the eyepieces I use uh, are a series of Orion eyepieces. Um, I have a couple of them right here in front of me. Um, let me zoom in on it a little bit. Uh, they are uh, 68 degree eyepieces. What I mean by that is normal eyepieces that you use, like if you use a plossal eyepiece for observing, uh, normally they're like a, uh, a 52 uh, degree field of view uh, eyepiece. And they're okay for visual work, but if you go to slap a camera on there, you're going to get vignetting or, or, or a tunnel look to it uh, where you can't get a, a full view. These eyepieces by Orion are a full 68 degree uh, eyepieces, uh, which means uh, there are much wider field of view. You can see the eye lens on these uh, eyepieces is, is, is very big, uh, uh, good size uh, eye lens on that. Uh, and, and they work uh, much better. Uh, I have this one, which is a, uh, a 21 millimeter. Uh, I have a 13 millimeter, which gives me a little higher power. This eyepiece actually uh, gave me the best images in my first set of uh, videos. It gave me a very, uh, very nice uh, set of images uh, on the uh, just past first quarter moon. Um, I also have for higher power, which I have not yet been able to use. I have not tested it yet. Uh, this is a, it's the same type of eyepiece. It's a, a five millimeter. You can see a, a five millimeter eyepiece. Uh, but I bought this at a telescope show, and it's made by Hyperion. Um, it's the exact same design as as the Orion eyepieces. Exact same thing. It's just made by. Uh, it's made for a different company, so uh, they put the Hyperion name on it. But it's the exact same design uh, as the Orion. Uh, I'm also going to add uh, an eight millimeter eyepiece uh, uh, to this set of eyepieces. Uh, it'll give me a little more flexibility. Now, how we take these images. Normally, in astrophotography, you use cameras without any lenses in front of them at all. The camera sits behind the telescope, and the telescope is the lens. Uh, but to get the flexibility that we have by using a webcam, we have to use a different method. And it's not a method that's normally used in astrophotography seriously, but this seems to be working out fairly well for doing videos. It's called afocal photography. Um, back back out just a little bit so you can see a little more of the eyepieces. Uh, let's see, that should do. And what we do is we take our eyepiece. Uh, let's go back. Let's use the 21. It's a little smaller. Um, you put this into, into the telescope. Um, and just as you were going to observe uh, with the eye. And what, instead of the eye, you put the camera right here, right over top of the eyepiece. So it's right up on it. So it's touching up against the eyepiece and looking right down into it. Uh, now the trick is you have to get the optical path coming out of the eyepiece lined up perfectly with the optical path or the lens of the camera. And sometimes that's not quite as easy as it sounds. You've got a little moving around to do. So in the setups I I'm going to about to show you that I have that hold the camera over the eyepiece, I have means of moving the camera around to line those up a little better. Now, I saw a very nice machined uh, setup 
being used in down in Texas. Um, and I uh, actually took that design and I just looked around my house and I came up with uh, a household version of that machined model. Only there is no machining with this at all. This is strictly a all found at home equipment. It's a basically a home jar, as you can see, made of uh, good sturdy plastic. You can see the cap is right here. This part here is is the jar with the cap. Uh, up on top is this little smaller plastic uh, container, which actually just fits down over top of that very nicely. That gets popped off in my camera, my C525, my original first camera, is inside under this cap. And that's how it's being held in place. And if I take this off and show you, I'm not sure how much of this you're going to be able to see, but again, if we zoom, let's see how much of this you can get to see. Uh, I mean, I've got a light here. Let me try adding that to it. Uh, you can might be able to see the camera down, actually down inside. Uh, yeah, there it is. There's the camera. You can see the camera. Uh, down in the bottom down there. You can see the lens of the camera and that goes right over the eyepiece. Now also notice that I'm holding this light. There's one, two, three, four um, pieces of wood with Velcro attached to them and they're made and put in there as guides. And they are nothing more than wooden rulers that I cut down to three inches, cemented in there uh, at uh, 90 degrees and put Velcro on them. Um, and then we had a situation where I needed to attach the camera um, to this unit. Uh, and that's where I come up with the screw system that you can see here. Um, that's on the uh, outside. Those four screws are turned. And that allows you to center this uh, camera holder right over the eyepiece. And well, you might ask, well, how do you devil do you do that? If you're using plastic container, <laughs> I can show you here on the. Uh, this is actually the first version of uh, of the camera holder I made, and and I've tore it apart and I've re reworking it because I'm gonna put the new 910 camera in this when it's done, uh, because I come up with a new kind of innovation uh, that I'm gonna use in this. Uh, and you can see on this model here, you can see since I'm still working on it, you can see the white here. Um, that's actually liquid nails, and it's all I've done is I've taken a, a, a drilled a quarter inch hole in there and taken a, a quarter 20 nut and put a little bit of the uh, cement on there and got the net in place and let it set. And once it's set good, then I put a, a heavier layer of the liquid nails on, let that harden for 24 hours, and then give it another 24 hours and put another coat on and build up two or three good coats on there. And once you get done, you have... Uh, uh, a quarter 20 nut on there which acts as threads uh, for your adjustment screws. Now this camera I'm going to make a little change to and I don't know if you can see it that well but this pin up here is actually going to be a spring-loaded plunger and you can see it there coming down into the camera in the middle of the camera there and opening in the background and the reason I'm doing that is is I'm designing this after um, the new finders of the day. For years they used to make finder telescopes that had uh, four screws and you had to turn all four screws to move the finder around the center and it was very very cumbersome and with this camera here that's the design I used as you can see it's got four screws um, on it and that was rather cumbersome uh, and I wanted some way to finally move this unit around just over the eyepiece until I got the optical pass to line up so I thought of the new design they've come up with for finder scopes where they have one pin spring load it and then just two two uh, rods and, and threaded nuts here that you turn and adjust uh, when you turn these and push in it'll push the pin out it'll move allow the eyepiece to go over and if you loosen one or the other of these it'll allow the the, the eyepiece that this pin is spring loaded and it'll push back in and push the eyepiece back the other way it makes it a lot lot easier uh, to move uh, the uh, uh, camera amount around over the eyepiece and line things up. Uh, get a view of the back here. You can see it's still it's a little bit messed up because uh, I am still working on it. This will be all painted nice and fresh or look finished when it's done. But there is where the uh, 
nine ten camera is going to sit right inside on that shelf just above the eyepiece. Uh, the way I get that camera in there and to stay is I use a very, very small amount of Velcro. I put pieces of Velcro on the bottom of this container and then just add a couple little pieces to the side of the camera. Uh, set my telescope up in just the living room and I use a light source, uh, shine a light down the telescope um, and put the camera in place. And I can show you how I do that if we take one of these eyepieces. Um, and we take the camera, and the camera just gets pushed down into place until it sits right on the eyepiece. Um, now, when I'm doing this with uh, the one that's not completed, this back, of course, will not be on. I, I take the camera, and I can see the light coming up through the eyepiece, and I take the camera with it on, and I look at the computer screen, and I just move and hover the camera over that Velcro until I can see that light cone coming directly up into the camera and then I drop the camera down onto the Velcro and it sucked in place. Um, I then may add one or two pieces of friction tape to kind of hold it together and then this part up here um, uh, it's going to be the same on the, the one I'm, I'm building for the 910 uh, it has a few pieces of, of, of foam and such and uh, maybe a cardboard spacer or two in there and when that gets pushed down and, and locked into place it's locked over and holds the camera right in place and again what's nice about this unit is you give it a little twist loosen up those screws give it a little twist and up it comes and you're ready to go and change eyepieces out and put another eyepiece in and put the uh, camera back in place. Uh, so that's very basically how it's done and nothing drastic about it. The, uh, the only innovation I've, I've done here is instead of um, having something machined at a machine shop, which uh, I used to be a draftsman, I could easily have drawn up a drawing for somebody, but it really would have been a pain in the neck to make something so simple. So I just went around the house, found a few household containers that looked like they would work, um, did a little sitting around and a few little sketches in my mind and uh, come up with that idea. And uh, as you can see, the one that's finished actually looks looks uh, looks like a, a almost a machine part, and it's not. It's strictly household made. And the this one here will look almost well it'll look just with this difference here being the top for a little different uh, size for the 910 camera will also look like a, a finished a machine uh, camera holder when it's done um, all in all they work well and I'm looking forward to hopefully having my uh, very next uh, live video of the moon somewhere within the next 10 days uh, uh, I, as I said in those first videos, I am filming from a shed attached to a garage right now in this cold weather that we can heat. Problem is, there's a tree line to my west, and I have to wait till the moon gets past, just a little past first quarter before it gets up high enough for me to get at, and then I can follow it from there and, do, and pass full moon. But uh, that's not going to be for a few more days yet, so I've got a little time to wait. Can't wait to try this new 910 to see Logitech C910 camera out on the moon. Um, yeah, my C525 uh, did not do all that bad of a job, I thought. And this camera uh, is a 10 me megapixel uh, camera with a Carl Zeiss uh, zoom lens on it. It should do a much, much better job. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, so until then, guys, uh, clear skies, good health, and hope to see you very soon.